Hey there everybody, this is Eric from Outer Limitless. And it's Carlos from Daily Carry Solutions. We're here in Atlanta today to cover Blade 2019. Now there is a lot of material to cover between June 7th and June 9th. These three days have a lot coming, so stay tuned. You're gonna like it. Good to see you. Good, buddy. Good to see you again. Thank you. I appreciate that. This is Carlos live and direct from Blade Show 19 with Dave Canterbury right up, here brother? from the Pathfinder Night Shop. How's it going, nice man? Nice to meet you again, man. Thanks, man. I appreciate that, man. Uh, I guess you can consider this a continuation of uh, last year's video. Sure. Uh, I came in here from uh, basically as a proxy for Outer Limitless uh, with a uh, with a mission to be able to find a quality knife. Uh, under a hundred dollars, okay. uh, you know, that could get the job done. I think that, you know, I don't think that there was anyone better to stop by than the Pathfinder Knife Shop. Well, I appreciate yeah. that, man. Um, I'm a big fan of the Dirty by Design line. Well, thank um, you. I really like the quality knives that you guys are putting out. And most importantly, you know, you, you touch on all the important knives of the, uh, uh, the, the important points of a knife right. uh, without having to break the budget for somebody sure, that wants to sure. go out there and actually use their knives and not keep them as safe. Please. So basically, like I said, this is going to be part two uh, sure. of the year. I know that we uh, touched up on the mountain lion last year. Yep. We'd like to go ahead and check out some of the you know, the other knives that okay. I feel that sure. you, based on your experiences, that you would recommend to some okay. uh, some viewers that yeah, would I like that kind of a knife. See some different handle materials playing around with Karenite now, maybe? Those are just one-offs, most of the yep. stuff's just, yeah, we're not really, those aren't production line knives. Our production line knives are staying pretty much with the, you know, the, the standard micarta and curly maple. But we do make some one-offs in the cure night and things like that, different different handle materials that we're trying out, just to make some fancier knives for people that want. Yeah, it's pretty. What we did this year was we came out with a new knife. And this is the uh, survival, the path, the PKS survival, and it has that that French trade knife platform with a nice barrel handle, so you can get a good solid grip on it, no matter what kind of grip you're putting on the knife. Feels about the same in your hand. There's a reason I broom handles around. You know, broom handles around so no matter how you got it in your hand, it feels exactly the same. And so that's what we stayed with with this because this was really meant to be more of a one tool option type knife. This is like, this is the only tool I've got. It has to be bulletproof. This is it. It's got a 1095. You got five inches of cutting surface on there. You got a nice big wide grip on there. So even if you got large hands like mine, mm -hmm. you're going to have something hanging out the other end. It feels comfortable in your hand. It's got a good deep choil on it so you don't slip up on the blade if you're piercing something with it. 3 16 90 degree spine, dirty by design, right? So, Amen, yeah. I mean, that's just it. So, and we're making that knife in both the curly maple as well as the camo micarta, which is here. And so that's our, our main new knife for this year as far as a PKS knife goes. Okay. Um, now we still have the standard Scorpion, which is the knife that I carry almost every day. I was gonna ask you that. So. Yeah, <laughs> actually the knife on my hip right now is a Scorpion. You know, it looks oh, a little, you look a little more battered than the other ones are. Nice. You, you know, make that yourself? I made this one myself. The handle's a little bit different. Yeah. Same material. I mean, this is walnut, but I fastened the handle a little bit to fit my hand better, index better in my hands. But other than that, it's the same exact knife. I mean, you can do that when you know your own hands are ergonomics. You exactly. need to make a production model. Yeah, when you're making a production knife, it's got to fit the mass. Right. You know? And there's nothing wrong with taking a knife that you buy that's a production knife make it and modifying own. it to make it your own. Right. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And I encourage people to do that kind of stuff. And we sell blade blanks for that reason oh, so people cool. can make their own knives. That's I didn't good to know. That. Yeah, yeah, we do sell blade blanks on our website of several designs that we have. That's smart. Um, and then we have the HD Scorpion, which is a larger blade. It's got a five inch blade on it instead of a four inch blade. And it's 3 16 instead of eighth inch. So this gives you that kind of a one tool option in a narrower blade, yep. if that's your preference over, say, a French trade knife design. If you want more of a Scandinavian style blade, you go with the HD. And this is a really popular blade as well. And it comes in both micarta as well as curly maple as well. Now this one here, this is probably my second favorite. This is the one I carry whenever I'm hunting big game, okay. deer and things like that. During trapping season, I carry this knife. Wildcat. This is the Wildcat, yeah. This this has got the advantage of having that nice, you know, four, four and a quarter inch blade, <laughs> which is really what you want if you're not using it for a one tool option. I got an ax, I got a saw. Yeah. I can get it with a thinner knife. It's gonna hold a good edge. It's gonna be really good for lifting skin up off the sternum and rib cage, things like that. You want that wider blade profile for that, so you're not getting into the guts of the animal very easy, gotcha. and you can lift that stuff up. So you got a little bit of a you got a little bit of a drop point spear point design with this, 
and it's comfortable in the hand. Again, this one's got more of a grip on it because you're going to be using this thing for skinning and things like that. Mm -hmm. But it's easy to choke up on it. It fits just yeah. perfect for skinning for that reason. So we yes. left it like that for that reason. And it also comes in my Carta and the Curly Maple. Got a, little, a few little neck knives that people always want that stuff. You know, we've got the one that says PKS and the skeleton that you could wrap if you wanted to or not. We've got this one that we came out with this year. That's the same spear point that we've always had on our website. We just put some handles on it this year. Mm. So people could have a little bit of a handle option if they didn't want to wrap it. That's so nice. we came out with a few of those just for the show. It's not something we even saw on our website. These are only available at the show. Now this knife here, this is kind of like our, 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 this was my special project for the year, okay? okay. There's a, an organization out there called Conservation Ranger Operations Worldwide. And they're the guys who are the anti-poacher training guys that train anti-poaching crews overseas and things like that. Mm -hmm. And anti-poaching tracking, trap dismemberment, things like that. And they approached me about making a collaborative knife with them because they wanted some knives in their nonprofit. So I had to figure out a way to make a knife design that they wanted and give them knives. Mm -hmm. So to do that, what I decided to do was get a design that I was confident with, make a hundred of them that were going to be a special offer of one to a hundred numbered, certificate of authenticity, and a crow support morale patch is gonna come with the knife, and sell those hundred, and that profit would pay for the 20 that we're going to give them. Wow, okay. So nice. we're gonna give them 20 knives and cheese, and these hundred are gonna pay for that. Nice. So this knife had to be a certain design. It needed to be a five inch cutting surface, we're close to it. This is like four and seven eighths. They also wanted it to be something that was capable of piercing the skull of an animal in case that some, one of the rangers was being attacked. Okay. Okay. So that's why it's got that false bevel on the top that goes say, down yeah, to three sixteenths yeah. to yeah. give it that piercing capability. But it's not a dagger. It's actually three sixteenths down to three thirty seconds. So it's a reduction in the material to give it more piercing capability, but it's not a dagger. So you can still baton it, you can still use it for a bush knife. I was gonna say, it still yeah. looks extremely durable. It's got a so really yeah. good 90 degree spine right on that thumb swell right there. Okay. So you can strike a fair stream rod with it, process material with it. And it only comes in that curly maple handle with a leather sheath. Very nice. I, I gotta say that that's, that's an exceptional knife. I mean, uh, the, you know, the, the Conservation Rangers operations worldwide, it, it, they, they have a, a great knife in their hands on behalf of Dave well, Canterbury and, and the Self-Reliance Outfitter, you know, camp and Pathfinder Knife Shop. I mean, uh, one thing that I, um, that really wasn't mentioned, that's something that I've always liked about this uh, Dirty By Design line is the, the, um, the parts of the blade where, where that are actually dark, that's actually as a result of the heat treatment. That's something that you guys leave on Correct. as a part of the heat yep. treatment. That's not any PVD coating, that's not any DLC coating, anything like that. That's something that comes straight off of the yeah, heat treatment. The they keep it nice and natural, um, and I think that that adds to the overall look of the knife. Uh, I think uh, just, and, and it lets you know once you've used it, uh, that it's been well loved. I mean, you saw Dave's knife. I'm sure I had it before and went through, oh, yeah. you know, what it's been through. Yeah, it looked just, I mean, it, has it a looked nice just story like that. Behind it, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, it looked just like that. Yeah. It's a little worn down now and, you know, a little cleaned up, razor sharp still. Yeah. Um, but it's used and abused. But that's what tools are for. Yeah, exactly. Tools yeah. are to use, you know. So, if I want a signal mirror, I'll go buy one. Mm -hmm. Right? This thing doesn't need to be bright and shiny. It just needs to do the job. Yep. So, there's no sense in going through the extra processes of making that knife all shiny when it's just going to get dirty anyway. So exactly. this is dirty by design. It's supposed to be dirty. Good hard use user's yeah, blades. Yeah, exactly. It's a user's yep. knife. And yep. being able to not do that final process of trying to shine that knife up allows it to be sold for less money because you don't have extra labor intensive. And that just goes to show, I mean, just because you're buying a knife uh, on a budget doesn't mean it has to be a cheap knife. I mean, it can be very high quality at a great budget, you know, to where anybody from any walk of life can pick up one of these and really put it to work, you know, uh, regardless of what's in your pocket at the time. I mean, you can pick up one of these for, you know, like I did last year with uh, the Mountain Lion for less than $100. Very nice, great quality. Really nice line of, uh, of knives you got, you got here. and. I wish you the best, Dave. Thank, Thank you, you so much for taking a moment to, Thanks, guys. to talk no to us. Thank you. Let's talk one, bro. Yeah. All right. Let's talk one right there. Nice. All right, beautiful. Yeah, because the first one's 101, right? Yep. And this is the second? And this is the advanced. Yeah, yep. this is what I want. All right. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I was just saying, literally, I don't know the last time I read a book cover to cover, and, uh, and I read you 101 cover to cover. So. Well, I appreciate that, I, man. Yeah, that was a good read. Um, well done, and taught me a lot. So. Thank you, man. Yeah. Hey. <laughs>
You're the man. Right, Appreciate it. No worries.